Hello everyone, Carlos here with Bearable Traders and in this video we're going to go over the best indicators for day trading. A lot of our members in our community are using these indicators and hopefully they can become helpful to you as well with your day trading strategies and help you make better decisions. So let's start uh, with the first one on here but definitely stick around for the entire video because we're going to talk about what information these indicators are providing you with and also some examples on how you can use them with your day trading strategies. Um, starting with the first one is going to be moving averages. Now the moving averages are very popular. A lot of traders have this on their charts um, because they're going to help you identify the trend of a stock right whether it's bullish bearish or even if you're just stuck in chop right so this is a great way to be able to tell that there are two main types of indicators we have the sma and the ema and the big differences between the two is that the sma lacks a little bit right it's not as sensitive to price action the way the ema is they're very close right they're they're not um the calculations are not way off so if you put them side by side you can see they're very close but you're going to notice that the SMA lags a little bit and the EMA tends to be uh, react faster to the price action, which as a day trader, when you're trading lower time frames, is exactly what you want. So you notice that uh, on our charts, we have the 9, the 20, the 50, and the 200. The 9 and the 20, we're going to have as an EMA because we want that to react very quickly to the price action, help us make faster de uh, decisions. And the 50 and the 200, which are great for the daily, we're going to have an SMA because we want this to lag a little bit and give us uh, better information for that, for those uh, uh, charts and those larger time frames. Um, here's an example on Apple. Apple is a great example today. Uh, we do have a, a nice trending stock here on the one minute. You can see it's following the nine, comes back and breaks the nine and goes down to the 20. If you're trading on a lower time frame, like the one minute, let's say you're taking this for a five minute ORB, which would have been in this area here. If you go in long here, the 9 EMA could tell you, hey, this stock is still trending higher, right? We do lose the 9 here for a little bit. It does bounce off the 20. You can see how beautiful this trend continues. And the 20 becomes clearly an area of great support. So if you're in this trade, this could be a great uh, way to identify, hey, is the stock trend changing? Is it time for us to get out of the stock? Um, we'll take a partial. You can tell by the 9 and 20. You can see here later in the morning, they both kind of start to roll over. The 9 first and then the 20 follows right after. And once you have this crossover here, many traders use this indicator as a way to tell, hey, the trend is over. The stock might be heading for an, a bigger pullback um, down to the VWAP, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So more of a reversal type uh, situation happening here, not a stock that is no longer in this upwards trend. Right. So very important levels to have on here, indicators to have. Definitely you want to have these on your charts to be able to identify uh, what the trend of the stock is and also when to possibly get out of the stock if the trend is changing. Number two is going to be high and low levels. And there, and there are a couple of, the, of these that we look at. The 52-week high and the 52-week low obviously are very important when a stock is hitting all-time all lows or 52-week low. Um, you're going to see a lot of volatility, a lot of mo movement happening around that area. Uh, in this case, we do have Apple hitting all-time highs, so it's more than a 52-week high. Uh, but when we are hitting 52 week high, you're going to possibly see some resistance happening at that area. Another levels that we do mark are the highs and lows of the last two trading sessions. And now, now these are very important and I marked them down every single day on my charts. They actually Dash Trader Pro does a great job to be able to uh, put these automatically on here. Uh, and you can see here on this chart, the dotted red lines are my highs and lows for these two last trading days, right? And they become very, very important. So uh, in this case for Apple, we had a nice breakout. We never actually went down and tested any of these levels, but there are occasions where we do. So for example, let's say you have the highs and lows of these two trading days, right? Notice how this would have been the high of this day. This would have been the high of this one. So you would have actually this level, which we're marking down here now, you would have this as your, your uh, levels of, as far as highs and lows because it would have been listed right on here based on this date. So look what happens on this day, right? We open up and we quickly go down to test this level, find support, and then we have this beautiful breakout, right? That happens quite a bit. And if you look at the bigger picture, you can tell that this area here is an important level for, for uh, Apple because we tested that a couple of times. We see a lot of resistance and, and so even support happening around this area. So you want to have that marked down. These four levels, the highs and lows of the last two trading days can give you really good information uh, to determine how to calculate your risk to reward, find support and resistance. You definitely want to have these on your charts, especially when you're trading intraday uh, with lower time frames. Um, previous day close is probably one of the most important levels that there is. It's actually the king of all levels is what we call it in our community. And the reason for that is because almost every single trader has the previous day close, right? Um, it is an indicator that everyone must have on their charts because it helps you calculate 
um, a couple of things in regards to the market, right? So for example, um, you can calculate whether a stock is gapping up or down for the next session. You can also find a really strong support and resistance of these levels, right? If something is holding the previous day closed, that could be a very powerful move for it to find support. And if it cannot break out of the, out of the previous day close, let's say we're trying to push above and we can't, that can be great resistance showing the stock might be weaker uh, than it was the day before and head even lower. So um, very, very good level to have. Here is Apple. And this is a, a, a interesting day because this was on uh, the, the 3rd, July 3rd. So just a day before July 4th. And as you can clearly tell, we had a half day here, right? Half day of trading and market closed at one o'clock. Um, that's where you see the volume just dies down there. Uh, but the most important thing is that, that on this day, I did mark down the previous day close. So if you were trading on this day, this would have been your previous day close here, 20, uh, 220 with 20 cents. That is your previous day close. Notice how the price action at the market opens, finds support, finds resistance around this area, right? Every time we came here and we dropped below this, you had a big move here. As you can see that there, another big move here. Eventually we came back to the previous day close and you can see the support that we're finding at the previous day close. Uh, and then after struggling a while, it finally stayed above the previous day close and gave you a nice breakout. That is just one example of the way to trade the previous day close. But again, what makes this uh, um, indicator very important and unique is that everyone is watching this indicator, right? So it's very, very important when it comes to trading, especially intraday trading. So you want to make sure you have this on here to be able to identify those very strong uh, areas of support and resistance. Um, number four is going to be Camarilla pivot points. Now, um, this can offer a lot of good uh, information and opportunities for any type of trading that you're doing, whether you're doing breakouts, whether you're doing reversals. This can be a really great way to tell if a stock is strong and wants to continue uh, by finding uh, support or if it's struggling and wants to reverse by finding resistance, right? So it can also determine great areas of reversals. Um, so if you are a reversal trader, this can be a really good indicator to have on your, on your charts. Plus, it's excellent at finding out if you are stuck in a choppy market, right? If you're not able to break out out of those S2, S1 levels, R1s, R2, then you can kind of be stuck in a choppy situation. And this is a great way to be able to identify this. Let me show you an example. And my example is going to come from Thor. Thor actually uses the camera really pivot points every single day for all his trades. Um, and here's a great example on how he uses the camera really pivots for a reversal. So this is his R4 here, right? And as you can see, the stock moves uh, market open. It moves right to R4, actually above it. Then it comes below the R4, right? This is your R4 line here. So that is showing a lot of resistance. Thor recognizes this and realizes, okay, this can be a good opportunity to go short and take it back down either to the previous day close or the VWAP or any major indicators you have on your charts here. So again, great area of resistance when the uh, the key important areas of, of Camarilla pivot points are going to be the R4 and R3 and for uh, for potential breakout and reversals and also the S4 and S3 for potential support and reversals as well. If the stock breaks out of, uh, breaks down from S4, that can indicate that the stock might actually be very weak and continue to trend. If it breaks out of R4, that means that the stock is actually very strong and it can continue to trend higher. So you can identify not only reversals like Thor took it here, you can identify if a stock is really going to be strong and it wants to continue to trend um, you know, higher or lower. So very important levels to, uh, levels to have on here. It does a great calculation for intraday traders. Um, definitely try it out if you haven't had the opportunity to do so. Also check out Thor's videos. He has a couple of this on our channel. So look for Thor's uh, how to trade the Camarilla pivots. He has a couple of great uh, videos showing you how to trade this, plus also showing you how to set this up on your charts if you are not having uh, uh, them uh, set up already. So definitely take a look at that. Uh, last but not least, probably one of my favorite indicators is going to be the volume weighted uh, average price. This is called the VWAP. And what it does is it can identify uh, a couple of things for you. First of all, where's there's some good volume and price action. Um, and it provides an indication of if a stock is at trading value, right? Which is important. Um, if something is oversold and undersold, you want or, or under, oversold or overbought, you want to be aware of that because it can it can provide you with some good information as to what decision to make. So for example, um, a lot of what happens here, institutions love to watch this indicator because if they're buying a large, uh, a large order, right, a million of shares, so let's say they want to get a million shares in on Apple, they're not going to send it all at once, right? They want the price to kind of come back down to the VWAP. They want to buy some more. It'll go back up, come back down to the VWAP, buy some more. And then this way, their average price at the end of the day is going to be at value. So a lot of institutional traders are looking at this indicator. What that means for us is volatility, right? If you have uh, an institution buying something um, and they're providing these large orders, it can create volatility for us and then we can join 
that action on a possible breakout. Um, so guys, I mentioned earlier too, you can identify if something is overbought or oversold for the intraday. And this indicator is calculated during intraday after the market is open. So it's great for us day traders because we're taking information that's happening um, right at the moment. There's very little lag as far as the information you're getting off, off the BWAP. Here's a great example. Two ways you can use this. For me, this would have been a five minute ORB breakout. And what I love to do is I love to have the VWAP as my stop loss, right? Because it's a great way to tell if it cannot hold the VWAP, most likely it is not going to trend. So here we have the second candle when it opens up, you can see the pullback below the VWAP on the way back up is usually when I get in for a five minute ORB. And then I want it to stay above the VWAP. My stop is going to be slightly below the VWAP because we know what happens, right? We never want to put exactly at a level. Um, you can really get stopped out pretty easy because price action tends to go back down to that level test and then head higher if it's going to be strong. If a stock goes below the VWAP and it can no longer hold the VWAP, that's an indication that we're not strong and most likely your strategy is no longer in play, right? So that's, that's one way I trade off the VWAP using that as my possible stop loss um, when I do uh, get a breakout above the VWAP. Another way to use the VWAP is for reversals, right? To calculate your profit target. If you look at Apple here, this thing took off really nice, had a great, great move. Then here around 225.50 uh, to 2525, it does start getting a little bit toppy. So now you can set up your stop loss here for a reversal, right? You want to set up the best point where if the price goes there, your, your strategy is no longer in play. So it would have been the high of this week here, right? You want it to go, stay below that. And then if you're entering here, once the things start turning around, if you're entering here, your target is going to be the VWAP, right? That is where you want to get to. And the Apple does just that. It gets right to the VWAP. That is your profit target you want to get to because then from here, we know what can happen the VWAP now can be an area of support, right? So a lot of uh, buyers, if they want to get into this on uh, add value, this is where the value is right now. They can start buying up the stock and look what happens. The stock goes right back towards the high of the day. So a very important indicator can be used for a lot of things. Those are just two examples. Um, we also have VWAP uh, uh, fake breakouts, right? So if a stock is lower, the price comes up, it tries to break above, it cannot stay above, it goes back down. That's usually an indication that the stock is rather weak and it can be a great way to take a short over towards the low of the day or whatever major indicator you have towards the bottom here. So um, guys, some really great indicators. These are five of them that you can use with your day trading strategies. Try them out. If I missed anyone, put them down in the comments below. We'd love to check them out and see how we can uh, put them in the next video when we do update this video. But try these out. A lot of members are having a lot of success with these indicators, tying them to their trade book with their day trading strategy. So take care and I'll see you in the next video.